are in the driver's seat of your career. You get to craft the career that you want. By writing code and being a software engineer, you really can have the power to impact the lives of many people out there in a positive way. I always try to remind myself that me being where I am today is a testament that I belong here. Hello and welcome to Real Talk, a monthly show by rewriting the code and hosted by myself, Mayuko. In each episode, we invite you, people from every corner of the RTC community, to join us and have real conversations about helping more women into the tech career of their dreams. Today's episode is the final episode of Real Talk, where I'll be answering any questions from folks in the RTC community about any of our previous episodes or about being a woman in tech. You can follow along using the chapter markers down below and make sure to subscribe to the RTC YouTube channel to get updates about what's going on in the community. Okay, so let's jump into the first question. Fazia, a previous guest of ours asked, what's your favorite part about programming and about being a software engineer? Thank you for your question, Fazia. So initially when I was first starting out in the industry, it was definitely the impact. The fact that I could write code that gets deployed on many devices that reaches millions of people was unreal. And it's true, by writing code and being a software engineer, you really can have the power to impact the lives of many people out there in a positive way. But as I've gone through my career, there's actually something that I'm more interested in or that I like more about this whole thing. And it's that I really enjoy making stuff with other people. Whether it's software or iOS apps or videos or food, making stuff collaboratively with other people is just so much fun. And I think it's because a lot of the time you're making something from nothing or something else. And also what you're making has never existed before in a similar way. The act of creating stuff is like really, truly magical. And so whether that's me working on a project right now and kind of being in the depths and working through tough problems or being on the other side of it and being done and being so proud of what I worked on, all those things are very enjoyable to me. And along the way, you get to solve some really cool problems and learn a lot. So yeah, that's why I really enjoy programming and why I like being a software engineer. The next question is, I'm interested in more than one career path. What should I do? Should I just pick one? I think the TLDR, the headline for my answer to this question is to choose the one that interests you the most right now and fits your needs in this current moment. And I'm assuming here that the context is that you can't pursue more than one thing at the same time. Like maybe you have two internships or two jobs that you're trying to decide between. And if you can pursue both at the same time, like maybe taking two classes in areas that you're interested in, by all means do it. But if you had to pick one, yeah, choose the one that you're most interested in right now. Because that doesn't necessarily mean that you're like closing the door on the other options that you're thinking of either. But I do think that especially in tech, it's really worthwhile to kind of fully immerse yourself and go deep in the one thing that you're really interested in for a while. Because you'll not only find out a lot of things about that kind of like job or career or topic itself, but you'll also learn about how you feel about it while going through that. And of course, if you can find opportunities that allow you to be nimble to switch from one thing to another, for instance, like a rotational program at a company, then those are awesome. I've always made sure to have like really light footwork when it comes to making decisions in my career to optimize for flexibility and have the most options possible to me. And honestly, I know it's really hard to just like choose the one thing that you're really interested in because maybe you don't know what that is, but just try it out. Try lots of different things and try to find that answer yourself and do a lot of reflection. What can you suggest to students who feel guilty about leaving a specific company, being scared to leave and explore your career? Let me just say this fear and guilt are real, especially when we're in uncertain times. It's really hard to let go of something that's stable and that's already working. And honestly, every single person is going to move through times like this very differently. Some people will explore as much as they can at the job or company they're at, maybe within or outside of their work. And others require a big change like switching companies to get that feeling that you're really exploring. Analogy here is that some people are gonna wanna go to a completely different country to satisfy their wanderlust, and others will drive a little bit further away from where they live to get a change of scenery. Honestly, do whatever feels right to you and be cognizant of the amount of risk and fear that you're willing to tolerate. But also, you are in the driver's seat of your career. You're the only person who gets to make the choices that you want to, so you get to craft the career that you want. 
So if you're having a hard time deciding because you're scared, one exercise that I do is to do some projections. I think about where will I be in five years if I stay with this company? And where will I be in five years if I leave this company? I see which of those two futures get me more excited and I lead with that instead of with fear. All right, and the last question. How did you manage to successfully navigate a male dominated industry without feeling discouraged? So the first thing that I do, which actually might be the most important, is to find environments where I feel the most supported across all of my different identities. A woman, a Japanese American, a millennial, etc. Tangibly, this means that I only interview at companies where I feel like I can connect with the employees and I feel that the manager and the company would be willing to advocate for me. And vice versa, I only work at companies where I feel like I want to advocate for them too. And so really it just means surrounding myself with great people, including allies and other women and friends too. And I say allies because sometimes it's just not feasible to be around a lot of other women in tech. More than once I've been the only woman on a team and definitely the energy is different when there's not other women on a team. And one thing that I started to do was to open up about the challenges I was facing with my teammates and ask them for the support that I specifically needed in order to thrive. So things like if I was going to a meeting with a team that I was unfamiliar with, then I would bring someone from my team who I was comfortable with to kind of back me up in case things go awry. And when it comes to finding other women, I always joined the Women's Employee Resource Group and joined a lot of women in tech organizations as well. And I think the last thing I did honestly was to not lose hope. It's certainly discouraging to always hear about all the negatives about being a minority in tech, but I always try to remind myself that me being where I am today is a testament that I belong here. Like girl, you've come this far already. And also I have seen a lot of progress for women in tech ever since I joined the industry in 2014. So I have hope that things are gonna get better. And that's what gets me through the dark times when things are really rough. I remember that there are people who will support me and that things will always get better. And I freaking got this. And that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Real Talk. And genuinely, thank you so much for me to you and the rest of the RTC community for allowing me to bring this web series to you. It was truly an honor to bring all this together and produce each of these episodes with the help of the RTC community. So as always, share with others what you learned, resonated with, and were surprised by, by tagging us at rewriting the code and using the hashtag RTC Real Talk. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to get updates about RTC. And if you're interested in empowering the next generation of college women to be leaders, then go to rewritingthecode.org. I'm Mayuko and I'll see you soon. Bye.